Modern day Judaism is extremely different from historical Judaism. And the reason that I say that is because they actually follow what's known as the Babylonian Talmud. Now they call it the Oral Torah or the Oral Law. And basically what it is is the commentary of the rabbis on their religion and how they're supposed to keep God's commandments. The problem that's obvious to anybody who researches Judaism is the fact that the Talmud, which they claim is the word of God, promotes pedophilia. It says a proselyte who is under the age of three years in one day is permitted to marry a priest. It also says when a grown man has intercourse with a little girl, it is nothing. A lot of Jews will study the Talmud and become agnostic because they will come to the conclusion very quickly after reading this that this book obviously didn't come from an all-loving creator. This obviously was the compilations of some different rabbis that in some cases, like we've seen here, were very perverted in their minds. The Talmud also goes on to say that Adam had intercourse with every beast and animal, but found no satisfaction until he had intercourse with Eve. Modern Judaism and the Talmud promote things that are so vile and barbaric that I can't even mention them in this video. If you judge a religion by its religious texts, Judaism comes back as being one of the worst. And the reason that I say that is because the sages promoted the idea that God is neither male nor female. They believe that God is transgender. They actually believe that God is an eternal goddess. It is New Age mysticism by the very definition. That's why Jesus had to come on the scene and set things straight and tell the Pharisees that you're adding your own traditions to God's commandments and that they're putting the traditions of men above the word of God. In the Talmud, it says, My son, be more careful in observing the words of the sages than the words of the Torah. So the rabbis are telling people that they should listen to them instead of the word of God, the Bible, the first five books specifically. That is very pagan. And it's blatantly obvious that they are not worshiping God the Father because they don't even know who he is. They think he could be a goddess. They think he could be transgender. They have no clue what they're talking about. They have a book that promotes pedophilia. They consider it to be scripture. They consider it to be the word of God, saying that animals and Adam had intercourse together to be able to see what he would like. I mean, this is blasphemous. I can't even mention all the things that the Talmud says that are evil, because if I did, I would probably be defiling people's minds. Sometimes I debate as to whether or not I'm sharing too much information on this topic because some of it is just terrible. Not all Jews realize this. If they did, they wouldn't even identify with modern Judaism because modern Judaism has really strayed from Moses and the prophets. It's not even the same thing anymore. Unfortunately, because they rejected Christ, God has allowed for them to go into error. The Bible says, whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. He that acknowledgeth the Son, hath the Father also. In the Old Testament, when Abraham and Isaac went up to the mountain, Abraham was going to sacrifice his only son. That wasn't just some random picture that didn't mean anything. It had absolute meaning to it. And I believe that the greatest meaning that we can take from that is that God would provide himself a lamb. That's what the Bible says. There was a ram caught in the thicket, but the Bible tells us that God would provide himself a lamb. The Bible says, And they shall look upon me whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him, as one that mourneth for his only son, and shall be in bitterness for him, as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. When Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were cast into the fiery furnace, the Bible tells us that King Nebuchadnezzar saw a fourth man in that fiery furnace, and they're all walking around in there. And the Bible goes on to say that the fourth man had the appearance of the son of of God. You look at the beginning of Genesis where God creates the world and he says, let us make man in our image. That means God chose to reveal himself in a plurality. That means that the Trinity is not a pagan doctrine. I know a lot of Jews will say they can't believe in Christianity because the Trinity is pagan. False. Read Genesis 1 where God is revealing himself in a plurality. He is one God, yes but he's in three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The Bible says these three are one. And so it's one God, 
that we worship. The best way to be a blessing to Israel is to tell them about Christ. And the ultimate curse that you could put on a Jew would be to avoid having a conversation with them about Jesus. Judaism teaches that if you want your soul to be redeemed by God, to just stay on the path, be a good person, follow the teachings of the rabbis. Look, my friend, that is not going to save your soul. Think of Cain and Abel, how Abel had to bring a substitute lamb, but Cain brought the works of the ground. He tried to do his own thing, but Abel brought a substitute, and we remember what happened. God was not pleased with Cain. But he was pleased with Abel. He was pleased with a perfect sacrifice. You can't redeem yourself by being a good person. That is pride. That is arrogance. That is pompousness. And my number one question to Jewish folks is what do you think Isaiah 53 is all about? The entire chapter talks about how the Messiah would come to this earth and that he would literally be crucified and bear our iniquities on his own shoulders. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. That passage is speaking of the fact that a man, it says he, hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. The Bible says that he, this perfect man, the Lord Jesus Christ, would be a perfect substitute for all sin. And if you look at Micah 5 2, it says, But thou, Bethlehem Ephrata, Though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. So it says that the Messiah would come out of Bethlehem, which Jesus did, and that he would come from everlasting, showing that he is deity, that he is God. Remember, this is the Old Testament. This isn't the New Testament. You can't be good enough to make it to God. God actually had to come down to us. God had to come down to this earth and live a perfect life and give himself on behalf of his own people. When we deserved the death penalty, Jesus took that death penalty from us, took us out of everlasting condemnation and brought us into everlasting salvation. Judaism teaches that you got to be good enough to make it to God. But the Bible tells us that as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. None of us are righteous. The Bible says in the Old Testament that all our righteousness is as filthy rags to God. The only way to have our sins atoned for is by looking to the spotless, perfect Lamb of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, and relying on His work to take us into eternity. You can't die a Jew and just expect that God will save you just because of your ethnicity. God is not a respecter of persons. And you shouldn't be following a book that blatantly promotes pedophilia and child molestation as true just because some rabbi or some sage said so. The Talmud actually states that Jesus is in hell right now and that he's boiling in hot excrement. That's what people believe. They believe he practiced black magic. They teach that he went to Egypt to learn his mysticism. They teach that Mary was a whore and that Jesus was a bastard child. I mean, this stuff gets so blasphemous, the things they say about Jesus. It's no wonder they think that God is a goddess and that they don't even know who God is because they've rejected the Son of God. The Talmud also promotes a lot of hatred towards Gentile people. It says that the best of Gentiles should be killed. And then it also goes on to say that the best of snakes should have its head crushed. So they believe that we are snakes, that we are terrible people because we're not Jewish. Well, the Bible actually says that he hath made all nations of one blood, that we all are precious in the sight of God, and that there is no one race that's superior to another. Everybody is precious in God's sight, and it's kind of sad that the Jewish writings have apostatized from what the Bible says, and they're claiming that people that aren't Jewish are snakes and that they should be killed. It is very hateful, it's a very barbaric and vile false religion.